Hello everyone and welcome to round 10 of the AOR PC Split 1 Season 7 Championship. I'm of course Justin aka Fake Ghost Pirate. And I'm Mikko aka Smuffler. And today we'll be driving 28 laps of the Korean Grand Prix, uh, one of my personal favorite tracks on the 2013 calendar. Unfortunately, it will not be returning for 2014, um, but I really do enjoy this track. It's uh, very dis got very distinguished sectors, um, lots of long straights, overtaking possibilities, high-speed corners, low-speed corners. It, I mean, this is a track that pretty much has it all, but uh, actually isn't all that popular with a lot of the drivers. Yeah, it's kind of a trademark Herman Tilke type track with uh with kind of a if you compare it to like India or something you can see that there's the big long long straight and another actually and then there's yep. a, like <laughs> like a high speed section kind of maggots biggest type and then there's like a twistier section at the end yeah, um, it's got some pretty high curbs as well, so a lot of the drivers are probably going to be running a little bit softer on the springs. Um, you, you really got to use the... <laughs> we see some lagging in the pit lane. Uh, you really got to uh, make good use of the curbs, and but still be very careful because uh, they could really throw you off. Um, there's a couple of those uh, sort of vacuum curbs <laughs> at this track, which will quite literally suck you right off the track, spin your car immediately, that sort of thing. Um, I believe those are, for the most part, in Sector 2, towards the end of Sector 2, start of Sector 3. So um, it's it's definitely a little on the dangerous side in certain parts. Um, I, again, though, I, I really love this track. I'd say it's probably in my top three tracks for the 2013 calendar. Um, I just I love Sector 2, especially. Um, there's just one corner that I don't really enjoy at, at this track. And it's in sector two, and it's that that very slow left-hand corner, the first gear corner, not this one, uh, but the one that we're coming up to in a second here. This this left-hand corner. Yeah, definitely. Right one here. One of my my favorites. <laughs> I hate that corner. It's just yeah. so bad. Um, I would love if they would revisit that corner um, and see if maybe that there see if there's something else that they could do. But uh, with it being off on the off of the calendar for 2014, I can't imagine them making any modifications to it. <laughs> Yeah, not really. It's a shame that it's not a kind of a crowd pleaser or they kind of messed up with the track that they built it so far off the... Yeah! Or where, it's like, where all the people are. <laughs> yeah, it's like really, really far from uh, Seoul, uh, yeah. like the the capital of South Korea. So, I mean, it just doesn't get that many, that many people at the track. Um, it's usually a crowd pleaser as far as television is concerned, though. It was a great race, race last year, aside from Vettel winning. So here we are with the side-by-side -side comparison. Miko on the primes, myself on the options. Uh, breaking down for turn one, and that's a, another first gear corner at this track. And uh, you got to be a little careful on the throttle as you're coming out of turn one. Uh, very easy to uh, get some oversteer, and uh, that compromises you all the way down this very, very long straight. Uh, one of the longest straights uh, on the calendar, I believe. It's extremely long. Uh, breaking about where the uh, curbing starts uh, at, for that hairpin corner. Uh, trying to stay away from the exit curbing. Uh, both of us, actually, you could say, tell we were we were treating that like it was poison or lava or something. <laughs> Just trying to stay as far away from that curb as possible because that can give you some wheel spin and uh, compromise you down that next straight. Um, so really not a huge difference uh, after the first sector. <clears throat> going through the second sector now, uh, using lots of exit curb actually for that one. Uh, coming out of that very slow first hand corner. Uh, love this series of corners here. The, the two flat out ones followed by the uh, very high speed kind of fifth gear, fourth gear corner depending on your tire type and health and uh, fuel amounts and that sort of thing. Um, my fastest lap was actually a PB. Um, my PB going into this uh, for qualifying was a 137.4. Um, so this is actually the fastest I've ever driven this course, at, at least in the Sauber. Um, I think I may have done faster in a time trial event or a race net event or something like that, but uh, you get a lot, of, a lot of extra grip in those types of events. So uh, round, rounding out Sector 3 with this uh, lovely right-hand corner where you're just accelerating the whole way through it. I really enjoy that corner and uh, just staying to the left-hand side as we cross the line. Uh, so here's the qualifying results. Alex in first with a 35.897, which is absolutely amazing. Onich with a 35.925. He said that he would not be getting into the 135s, and then, of course, he did. Uh, newcomer Gaston Rivero uh, 
gets uh, P3 uh, with a low one uh, 136. Um, he's he's new. Uh, there's actually a couple of new guys in this race uh, that you guys might want to look out for. Um, it's Gaston. There's Tremium, who who is new-ish. Uh, it's not his first race, but he, he's still kind of new. Um, and there's one other person whose name I think I'm missing, but we'll we'll catch up with yeah, them I later on. I think he's the Turkish guy. Furkan Özkan, maybe. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. He has he has a tough name to pronounce. I remember now. Um, so my strategy for this race is going to be um, option prime option. Um, and I think I'm stopping on laps 7 and 20. Yeah, 7 and 20. Um, so that's going to be my strategy. Option prime option. It's the super softs and the medium compounds for this race. Um, Miko's, uh, you're going to be going with something a little bit different. Um, you actually qualified on the primes, obviously, hoping maybe that you could sneak into the top 10. Um, but you're, uh, you weren't in the top 10, so you're going to be starting on fresh primes uh, and then doing two option stints later in the race. Yeah, uh, we'll talk about strategy a little bit la later as we go to the race start. But uh, there's plenty of time to talk strategy in this this video. Yeah, I had the, was, was that your point of view? No, that was that, I think that was or I can't tell who's the, who's this I think, is. I, I think, think it was mine. Yours. Yeah, it said Romian had, was on pole had, for some reason. Yeah, I had the same bug. Okay, okay, okay. I was I was curious if that was just me or if that was everybody else. <laughs> so here we are on the grid, uh, just behind Zephyr and Chicane, just ahead of Trebium Five Lights. And they're out, and we are away. I'm actually in lean. Uh, really no positions to be gained at the uh, first corner of this race. Uh, not bothering to use any curves as well. Um, but a gap opens up uh, at corner one there, and I go ahead and go for it. Go side by side oh, with Zephyr, whoa. and I've spun right off the track. <laughs> and I've lost my entire front wing as well, <laughs> just just for good measure. Yeah, really unfortunate. I don't know why why it happens. I, didn't, I don't think it happens happened in the last game that you get tangled like that I don't think so uh, that that seems to be sort of new um, yeah it 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 was a strange event for sure uh, for the sake of brevity we'll just call it a racing incident but um, unfortunately to lose my entire front wing at turn two um, means I'm probably gonna lose 20 to 30 seconds just on the first lap uh, plus another uh, 15 20 seconds in the pits as well um, so I actually went ahead and just retired from the race unfortunately um, I had really high hopes for this race I put in a lot of practice for it as well um, again because it's one of my favorite tracks so um, you know I, I don't enjoy practicing Monaco uh, which means I'm you know not going to practice as much of it I actually really enjoyed practicing for Korea so um, I did some social racing I did some stuff with Alex and you and and some stuff by myself and um, just was really feeling good about the race actually and just to have that happen at turn one was really disappointing um, I was pretty upset about it so that's why I went ahead just took it out I, I wasn't I had no interest really in uh, you know just spending the entire race playing catch-up I mean it's it's possible that I would have been lapped in the first stint uh, after an incident like that um, and with the tire life there's really I mean I could have maybe tried going prime prime you know just pit at the end of this lap throw on a set of primes and then pit again on lap like 14 or 15 for a second set of primes um, but it, I mean I would have lost a lot of time I think um, as yep. Zephyr actually having a little coming together with his teammate Raiden up ahead in the other Toro Rosso and it looks like you're actually uh, trying to look for a way around him as he has an enormous corner cut over the penultimate <laughs> corner there. Uh, you, you're looking like you might actually have the pace on him even on the prime tires. Yeah, at this point really, really I'm trying to preserve my tires. You can see in the middle sector I'm trying to ease the, ease the car around the long sweeping corners, trying to protect that right front tire because that's, that's the tire that's gonna suffer the most definitely and also uh, I noticed you were using quite a bit of lean as well in uh, sectors two and three uh, just doing some fuel saving uh, for your double option stints later in the race certainly is gonna be beneficial losing a bit of time now to the option runners up ahead um, actually Raiden I believe is also on the primes right yeah that's right Okay, yeah, so the two Toro Rosso guys are running very different strategies with the uh, uh, Raiden on the primes ahead of Zephyr on the options currently. As we're going through sector two now through this very low speed first, hand, first gear corner. And uh, you've got in front of uh, Tremium, so uh, not quite in, in last. Is he on the primes as well? Um, 
Not sure, but it uh, looks like there's a bit of a gap forming behind, so I'm not having to look in my mirrors at this point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, you can you can see him, uh, that gap building a little bit, um, so I, I gotta imagine that he's on the primes as well. Um, so quite a, um, a few different strategies going on. Uh, some people are gonna be doing double prime stints, some people are gonna be doing double option stints, such as yourself. Um, so that's it, another great part about this track, actually, is that we're seeing and quite a few stops. different strategies. Yeah, yeah, even some three stops as well. Um, again, Zephyr cutting that second to last corner, and uh, you've actually managed to close that gap down um, maybe he had some uh, dirty air effect uh, from his teammate up ahead that was causing him to lose a little bit of pace. And again, I, I, all four wheels going off the track. Um, getting a little bit of oversteer, which uh, I was talking about in qualifying, which unfortunately is going to compromise you a little bit all the way down this. Uh, you did get DRS, though. It's lap three. DRS is active. Um, and I imagine you're probably going to be braking a little bit before the curbing. Just ever so slightly before it, actually. No problems, though. Um, did I see that you switched to 50-50 braking for this for this track? Uh, yeah, I think so. I'm yeah, I think I saw you switch. Sure. I yeah. think I saw you switch to 50-50 earlier on. Um, the front, we're, we're, front locking is pretty bad at this track. Yeah, yeah, but you really got to use high large. Um, it's definitely the faster way around the track, so um, certainly that uh, that's one of the ways that you can try and prevent the front locking. Um, no problems with rear locking, obviously, on a on a 50/50 setup. You really got to go heavy on the rear, you know, 51, 52 to the rear before you start seeing rear locking. Yeah. Really, a, a bit strange to see Raiden and uh, Zephyr battling because they are two teammates and since they are on a different strategy it would be uh, I would I would think that uh, wh whoever is on the options would be let past right away and I mean yeah he was he wasn't let past I don't think but Zephyr has managed to get past but it doesn't yeah, look like Raiden is yeah it doesn't look like Raiden is really losing much time to him uh, even in the twi tight, tight and twisty uh, sectors two and three, um, and at, wow, you actually managed to sneak a DRS off of uh, Raiden as we start lap four. Yeah, no, no pit stops yet, I don't think. Yeah, I think lap five is probably when we'll see the first uh, first people pitting, and those are probably people that are going to be doing double prime stints. Yeah, double um, prime stints or three stops. Right, exactly. I did have a little chat with Alex Gillen before the race, and whoa, Raiden has gone heavily over the curb at the hairpin there, and that has severely compromised his exit, and that's actually allowed you to pull alongside him and Zephyr to pull out a little bit of a gap, and you're going to have the inside line as we come to the start of Sector 2. Um, if he can hang it around your outside, though, he's going to have the inside line for this next corner, and it's very difficult to hang around the outside at that corner there. So, yep, he... Well done. He, very, uh, very well done uh, defending that position. Uh, it's not even for points at the moment, but still fantastic racing, um, especially on these prime tires in the early stages of the race when the cars are so heavy with fuel. Yeah, good wheel to wheel racing there and no contact made, although we were side by side through that really tight hairpin. Yeah, yeah, uh, side by side for, I mean, quite a while there uh, without any sort of issue and Raiden's gone a little deep into that corner um, but it looks like you went a little deep a little bit after him <laughs> he went yeah. deep first and then you went deep and so everybody's gone deep so it's as you were um, only six tenths behind though so you will get DRS unless something horrible happens in the next couple of turns here um, and I believe yeah he's definitely close enough to Zephyr as Zephyr has gone very wide and I think he must have had some oversteer or something and we do see Raiden t uh, pit and it looks like there's a couple of other people in the pits as well. So a few cars pitting here at the uh, end of lap four even. Holy cow, that's very early. Uh, certainly those, those are definitely people that are three stopping or running double prime stints. Yeah, for sure. And uh, a bit strange to see <laughs> Raiden get off those primes so early. Except for coming on my inside here, not really giving him any any trouble here. I did not even think about that until you've said it. Yeah, Raiden, uh, Raiden is pitting extremely early considering he's on the prime tires. Um, people starting on the primes generally for this track probably want to be stopping around laps 10, 11, 12, uh, really depending on what kind of strategy they're running. Um, or really somewhere between laps 9 and 12 would be yeah. the, the prime stint, uh, stop time. Um, it also depends on if it's a fresh set of primes or if you qualified on them in the top 10 and that sort of thing. Um, so yeah, that's 
very surprising from him. Um, it's 24 laps left. I'm wondering, oh, he must be doing a three stop and he must be running triple option stints because there's 24 laps left in the race. Uh, 24 divided by three is eight and you can do about eight laps on the option tires. So I got to imagine Raiden's just trying to get those uh, prime tires out of the way um, so that he can push hard on the option tires with uh, three consecutive option tire stints. Yeah, that might be a pretty good strategy actually because I noticed that in, in practice these prime tires, they once they get worn, they they really you really lose time on the on the slow stuff on the yeah. slow sectors. As uh, Zephyr pits, Zephyr pits, yeah, and a lot of cars in the pits right now. Yep, and that's actually going to promote you up to P3 with uh, Gaston Rivero uh, in the lead at the moment and uh, Chicane in, in P2. Um, and it looks like Tremium just behind after coming, uh, nope, nope, Tremium was behind the whole time, so he hasn't pit as well. Um, so yeah. I believe it's just the four of you guys that haven't pit yet. That's, uh, Gaston, Chicane, Miko, and Tremium who are, who are still staying out after lap five. Uh, that's really interesting because actually my planned pit stop was lap seven. Yeah, and I think, uh, Gaston, he was on a option prime option stint or a strategy. Mm -hmm. So he must, he must have been on option. I mean, he's on lap seven now. Yeah, it's lap eight, and Chicken is in the lead at the moment. Yeah, he must have pit on at the end of lap seven, and yeah, I, I do believe that he was. I mean, he had to be on options at the start because he qualified third. Uh, if he if he did a 131 on primes, Ooh. that would be pretty insane. As uh, was there some contact there at turn one? Yeah, a little bit of contact. A little behind, bit of contact pushed Alex, wide. Yeah. Uh, there was a little bit of a, a, a lockup as well, which doesn't doesn't help. The lockup system in this game is incredibly inaccurate and will just push you right off the track as you're braking very early in an effort to avoid ownage. Whoa. And Alex has to take avoiding action, actually. Um, I mean, he, he tried to sneak up the outside there um, as just right as that gap was closing. And I think I think both of you were surprised to find each other in that situation. Yeah, Gaston coming up, coming up my inside here. Yep, all the, all these people are, are on fresh tires. Um, Ownage, Gaston, Alex, all these cars. There's uh, uh, Furkan, Ozkan. Um, I do apologize if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly. Uh, let me know if, if you watch this, how to pronounce it phonetically. Um, but he's behind as well. Uh, all of these cars have pit for new tires. And it looks like some of them are, uh, Furkan there is actually on the option tires. Uh, Kifla is on the prime tires. And I do believe that Gaston was on the, yep, Gaston's on the prime tires as well. And here's Alex uh, coming back as well, I believe. Uh, you won't be giving him too much trouble as you're on almost nine lap old prime tires. I mean, and this is really where you start feeling the prime tires starting to go, um, especially this early in the race. Um, you know, if this was a, a later stint, you could probably give it another lap or two before you start really feeling the degradation. But with the fuel this heavy and pushing this hard, uh, they wear out a little bit quicker. And yeah, lots of oversteer coming through there. Managed it fantastically though, using some curves. W were you using curves uh, for that final corner every lap? No, that was a kind of special occasion. <laughs> gotcha. Okay. Yeah, because I was uh, I was using about 60-70% of my curves on the main straight and then uh, the rest of it and the following straight after that. As uh, Alex has managed to get past Furkan as they go on to this very long straight. Uh, I'm not sure which of them has DRS, but you've gotten DRS and you got Fat First behind in the Red Bull. Not too far behind. Uh, he's definitely pit already. Um, yeah, at this point, I'm just. Uh, are you the only person that hasn't pit at this point? I'm not sure if Chicane is still out. Might be actually. Yeah. Chicane okay. must be leading. Yeah, he, leading he, the he definitely too. doesn't have a have a big lead anymore though. That lead has definitely <laughs> been cut down significantly as Furkan's going side by side with Alex, but Alex has the inside line. Uh, Alex being defensive though, actually through the left hand corner, that's going to compromise his exit. He's going to have to be defensive again through these very high speed corners as Fat First is closing in on you pretty pretty well as well. Yeah, at this stage, I thought that. <laughs> Fat first is really close to me in the in the championship, so I'm gonna I'm I'm not gonna give him the same kind of room as as Alex. the guys that as yeah. the, as the guys that just flew past me. So yeah, certainly yeah, he is a championship contender with you, so uh, you definitely wanna 
You don't, I mean, you, you want to battle him, yeah, is, is yeah. the polite way of saying it. Uh, certainly don't want to make it easy on him. Uh, don't want to make it impossible, but um, certainly want to make your car as wide as you can and doing a great job of it. As we come to the end of lap 10 and start lap t uh, 11, and this is going to be your final lap of the stint, as actually a car is already pitting. It, lo it looks like that was Furkan. Mm -hmm. Uh, who I, that she I, it looked like a Lotus. It looked like a Lotus. Yeah, there's two cars in the pits. I think it was Furkan yeah. and Chicane, possibly. Yeah, and Fat First is now really on my gearbox. And yep, he's and he's so got the DRS, that, and yeah. he's going to have the inside line. And yeah, your tires really... are extremely worn, so he's going to be able to brake a lot later than you, even though he's, on, he's also on the primes. They're just so much fresher. Uh, you're going to try a little bit of a switchback maneuver. You get a great exit, actually, but he's uh, got the left side of the road covered. He's got the inside line using the rest of your curves, but unfortunately, I think his extra grip just allowed, gave him that little bit extra speed coming out of the hairpin, and uh, that allows him to move up into P5 uh, with his teammate Jack first just behind. Uh, the two of them scything through the field uh, one at a time and going through sector two now and i can imagine you are very excited to pit <laughs> <laughs> yes very and uh same story with jack first we're really close in the championship so not giving him any extra room at this even at this uh, last lap before i'm pitting so yeah the and two actually, of them are very evenly matched very similar speed yeah i think they're brothers if I'm correct. <laughs> I'm not. I don't. I don't know for sure. I know they live together. Um. So they they could they could be related possibly, or it could just be like you know roommates because uh, they're in school together or something like that. But um, it's it's pretty surprising that two people of that similar skill would actually be living in the same place. Um. And you're doing actually a great job of keeping Jack first behind as you do dive into the pits now. And actually, Fat First uh, even pulled up, uh, pulled ahead a little bit. Oh, right, we have another newcomer for this race, uh, Ryan L83, uh, who is famous on YouTube for doing the Overtake of the Week series with F1 2012 and F1 2013. Uh, he recently got F1 2013 for PC, and uh, he raced with us for this race. Uh, really, really good pace from him. He, he really just kind of jumped in and was right on par with everybody. Um, you know, he wasn't challenging Alex or Ownage, but very few people in this world can. Um, but he was he was certainly a points contender, um, and he seems to be doing pretty well in this race as he's currently in the points standings. Yeah, well done. And I don't know what's happened to Tremium because he's... Oh, wow, yeah, he has he, dropped he, back he, significantly. If, if he's lost a wing or something, because I think we're now at the same... He just pit on the same on the same lap as me but he's way back yeah yeah he is he is very far back he may he may have just had some sort of off track or something um yeah or he might he might have lost the wing and lost some time in the pits as well yeah, as 10 Luke. seconds yeah i mean that's that's a pretty big gap so um and he w he was not far off the pace in singapore at all so i gotta imagine he's just running into some some issues in this race yeah and now I have the benefit of, of the clean air and fresh ah, tires, so... So refreshing. This is rough, yes. And you can see a little bit of a, of a rubber in line. Yeah, especially in these appear. yeah, especially in these high speed corners, especially like on this one there, you get a ni very nice line as you do a purple se uh, sector two there, 2.3 seconds behind Furkan, who um, I believe was the Lotus that pit ahead of you before uh, when we were talking about that. Um, that would explain why you're kind of catching up. It looks like he's in somebody's dirty air, and that might be compromising his lap times, which has very nicely allowed you to close down on the two of them as they're going to be going side by side as you do the fastest lap of the race. Yeah. And wow, we got a Ferrari coming out of the pits as they went three wide for a moment there. Is that Alex Gillen that must, up ahead? That, that must be Alex Gillen, yeah. Wow, so he comes he's out of the, the pits. He's it, the only, only Ferrari in this race at, at the moment. Really? What happened? With, was Romian not in the race? No. Then why did it show his name at the start? <laughs> now because, I'm really confused about that. Uh, as there's cards off the track, I don't know if there was contact or something. Yeah, that's been very helpful for you though, as uh, Furkan and Zephyr have some sort of issue that's uh, driven them right off the track. It looks like it's affected Alex Gillen as well, who's currently on a prime tire stint. Um, oh, right, I, I do believe Alex is running option prime prime. Uh, so this is, uh, if he just came out of the pits on these tires, I gotta imagine that this is his third and final stint. Yeah, I think so. So, um, 
about Romian, yeah. I think we just started. We were waiting on some of the guys still. We were waiting on... I can't remember who, but we started and I think he joined like at the... S just as we were... Oh, right, right. I remember seeing qualifying. his name pop up. Yeah, it said it said he joined the race and we were already in qualifying. So yeah, that, that, yeah. Must, have been, that must be what that was all about. And then the game just got confused about who was what car, so... Uh, okay, so <laughs> I'm glad we got that <laughs> sorted out at least. Um, but really, if you, have, if, if you want any hope of finishing ahead of Alex Gillen, you are gonna need to catch and pass him pretty shortly here, um, if indeed this is his final stint. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, not looking too good as he is. I think he's battling with Chicane at the moment at yep. the front. Yep, and I believe he's he's got DRS on Chicane. Chicane moves to the inside, for, uh, to, he goes defensive to the inside of the track. Um, unfortunately, you were too far back to get DRS, so uh, no DRS on this occasion. But uh, they're going side by side through the hairpin. That's going to compromise them a little bit, and you might be able to pick up a little bit of a slipstream here. Mm, looking like a little bit too far back, unfortunately, as uh, earlier Raiden did the fastest Ooh, lap of the race. Alex going defensive. very defensive, and Chicane trying to hang it around the outside. But nope, Alex is able to take that position and it looks like chicane has been compromised pretty heavily as you closed in on the two of them uh gonna be getting a nice slipstream through here there's really uh no dirty air effect issues through these high speed corners even if you're right behind somebody the corners are high speed enough that it's, it's still flat out so um those corners are you know practically a straightaway oh as we oh, lose no. connection to ownage is that the first time of the season is that his first disconnect i can I yeah. want to say it is. I, I think it is. I think it's his first disconnect of the season. That's really unfortunate. It's a problem uh, that Onage has had in, in previous seasons, but really has not been an issue this season at all. Um, really not sure what position he was he was in at the time, um, but uh, that's really unfortunate for him because certainly he was he was a podium contender at the very least. Um, yeah. And actually, he, he was certainly in front of Alex Gillen uh, at the moment, uh, unsure how many stops he had left to make, if any. But um, yeah, he, he that's just really unfortunate for Onich. Yeah, and uh, I've closed down Chicane, Onich's countryman, and got the DRS. Gonna move to the inside. Pl plenty of <laughs> plenty of slipstream. Yeah, I think uh, I think Chicane's actually not really uh, gonna battle you for that. He he didn't even bother defending that one. Um, it seemed like he was much more eager to defend against Alex Gillen than than against you even. Uh, he just kind of stayed to the left hand side, let you t let you take the inside. Um, not sure what that was all about. Maybe he he just is losing his tires or something like that. But um, you do take that position off him, moving your, uh, yourself up to P6. Um, Alex has built a little bit of a gap, but again, he is on the prime tires. Skipping ahead now to the end of lap 19. In P3, Kiefla behind P3, Alex yeah. ahead. One more stop for you to make that's going to be at the end of this lap here, lap 20. Um, interesting pit uh, strategy from you, actually. Stopping on lap 11 and 20, that would mean uh, that you're doing uh, nine laps on this first option stint and eight laps on the second option stint. Uh, so certainly uh, last lap was probably a little bit of a little tricky, and uh, this lap is going to be even trickier. Yeah, in practice I noticed I, I tried pitting on lap 19, and it just... <laughs> the tires were just so finished at the end of lap 20. Yeah, and uh, it's such a crucial... Tw lap 28, I mean. And it's the most crucial part of the race as well as the end, yeah. so uh, better to just get your, your tire woes out of the way in the middle of the race here, just kind of do your best. Um, you know, you might be, even be able to slow some people down. Kiefla behind is certainly uh, having just a little bit of a problem getting past you. Um, he might be having a look here, though, as you had to short shift just to maintain traction. He's going to have the inside line for this very high-speed corner and uh, giving each other very nice room, actually, there. Uh, not too bad as uh, you had the inside line for the next corner, you're able to maintain that position. And he's going to uh, he moved to the left, but uh, you were still ahead of him, so you took, went ahead took the racing line. And again, yeah, he just he can't seem to get, get by you. Some great defensive driving here from you. It's really hard to pass on this it's this middle sector and yeah. the last sector as well. There's yeah. no passing location whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, really tough. Uh, I mean, you're just not on the throttle for long enough really to get by somebody. Oh, as there's a Ooh. little bit of contact and... 
Keith was just going to go ahead and drive right by, and uh, <laughs> you locked your wheel a little bit, went off the track, so uh, lost probably about a second there, unfortunately. And you're going to take that second right back in the pit entrance. And <laughs> as we come into the pits for your final stop, and it's another option stint, of course. And uh, I imagine you're going to be very quick in this uh, final stage of the race here. I certainly hope so. And uh, that was my strategy all along with this, with this option stint, because even the Warren options work pretty well on the on the slow corners but the worn worn primes they are just horrendous <laughs> in the in the slow corners so yeah i'm not sure if it's uh i don't know if it has anything to do with the track surface uh, or anything like that but um the super softs seem to hold up better here than at certain other tracks and i mean this track is pretty demanding on the tires so um, it's actually surprising how well you know the worn super softs will work yeah, I don't know what exactly why why, why that is, but well, I don't know what uh, pit strategy Tremium is, but I, I'm <laughs> seem to be closing on him at quite a pace here. Yeah, pretty massively. I mean, certainly on the prime tires, um, so you, and yet you're on brand new <laughs> option tires, so uh, there is zero uh, scenario here where he would be faster than you. Um, <laughs> even if he was on brand new primes, you're still on brand new options, so I imagine you've got to be looking for a way past pretty soon here. But as we were saying uh, just just a few minutes ago, it is very hard to get by here. As you, he, he left a little bit of a gap, went wide. And you're going to try around the outside of this corner, and absolutely amazing. Uh, clearly a big difference in the tires there, but uh, still a fantastic move to get by somebody in Sector 3, or Sector 2. Yeah, he left a little bit of a cap gap, so I just pushed for it and it seemed to work. Yeah, and uh, he was he was a very responsible driver about it. He recognized that you were, you had been able to sneak your nose in there, and uh, he adjusted his his line accordingly. As we got some cars in the pits, it looks like Grand New, and I think it was Ryan L83 in the pits. Um, so they're uh, stopping at the end of lap 21 to just do a, a seven lap option stint at the end of the race, or I imagine it's an option stint. Otherwise, they got a really strange strategy. And in P6 at the moment. Got uh, yep. Granu behind on the slightly fresher option tires, so he could be a threat later on in the race. That, but that's what I was expecting, at least, because Granu is normally re a really quick driver, and up ahead, fat first seven seconds ahead. So. Yep, want to keep an eye on those gaps now. 7.2 seconds to fat first. Um, he's pretty close to Jack first, though, um, so they could potentially uh, start battling each other. Um, at least causing some dirty air effect, which could benefit you in, in, in the final stages here. Actually, what I'm thinking is that they're using their each other's toe, at least, or, or the DRS, at least. Because they've done it before, I think. In Interesting. Monza. Interesting. So well, even in the race, using the DRS gives you an extra or be a benefit of maybe four tenths. I'd, I'd even go so far as to say five tenths, possibly, yeah. if you, especially if you consider the DRS on the start finish rate. Certainly not as effective there, but yeah, I mean, it, it's certainly close to half a second, if not half a second, as Gaston Rivero actually does the fastest lap of the race, 137.4, which is actually only really quick. one tenth off of my qualifying lap. <laughs> and seven tenths faster than me, so really quick. Wow, as, uh, yeah, the gap now to Fat First is only 6.2 seconds, so you've actually gained a whole second on uh, the Team First guys in the Red Bulls in only two sectors. Uh, that was 7.2 after Sector 1 and 6.2 after Sector 3. Um, so, th I mean, that's over a second per lap that you're gaining on them. Here we are at the end of lap 25 now, only 1.7 seconds behind Fat First. Uh, so it's certainly looking like you've got the, the pace to catch up to these guys. As we can see, Fat First is on the, on the prime tires. Yeah, they're both on the prime tires, and my curse is broken. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, that's why? Why? Why does this keep happening to you? <laughs> are you? Are you intentionally giving yourself some sort of handicap just to make the rest of us feel bad about your performances? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's my excuse for not go <laughs> getting on the podium every time. <laughs> Oh, I need some, some curse hacks then. 1.4 to Fat First now, so another three tenths just in Sector 1, and there's like 
two turns in sector one so um and the turns are where you're going to be closing down on the two of them so um yep yeah, as we can confirm that jack frost definitely is on the prime tires the two of them and uh on the third to last lap here only two laps left after this one and uh, definitely closing in. Oh, and I'm just noticing Granu has fallen back drastically. Not sure. Maybe he was, in fact, on a prime stint at the end there. Um, but he's... Uh, actually, after the race, he, I talked with him. And I think he has had some lag issues, which caused him Oh, okay, to like screen freezes, his... that sort of thing. Yeah, the same th type I had in Silverstone, where for some reason, the, I mean, it, it doesn't seem like it's really bad but your lap time is really bad yeah yeah it adds up yeah certainly I, i've experienced uh, experienced those lag issues enough uh, mine seem to have improved actually uh as the season progressed i haven't had as many of them um as fat first had a pretty bad final corner there he went very wide and that allows you to close the gap enough to get the drs that you're actually only two tenths behind him at the moment and i gotta imagine even without curves that you're looking to make a pass here and you are as he's got drs too on his teammate jack first up ahead and uh, looks like he might just have maybe an extra kilometer per hour on his top speed than you as you're unable to make a move on him at that location. Um, second good defending for him. Yep, second to last lap here. And actually, he's going to stay to the outside. He, uh, he's thinking that you're not going to make a move to the inside. You do move to the inside, but unfortunately, he breaks late enough to uh, maintain that kind of racing line through that corner. And very close behind now, and uh, close close that back down that gap back down to Jack first as well. Uh, after he pulled away earlier in the lap at the end of lap 26 and beginning of lap 27, um, so the two you have closed him back down a little bit, and you are just behind Fat first. And I gotta imagine you're uh, probably make, looking to make the pass happen uh, right at the beginning of lap 28. I'd imagine. Yeah, pretty much at this point, <laughs> trying to. See if there's any way past these guys because. Well, here's something interesting. Yeah. Your engineer just said your curves is fixed, yet it's drained. Oh. <laughs> Did they use the curves for you? <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> but actually, actually, you could see if you watch this back, you can see that my driver is pressing the button. I was still trying to press the button. I don't know if it's still working but the graphics still said that it's broken, so... Well, it must have worked. If, if it actually drained your curves, I gotta imagine that it's working there, so... Uh, there's an interesting little tip for, <laughs> for, for you viewers out there. Um, <laughs> I certainly wasn't aware of that, so that, that's uh, interesting. Uh, apparently, when curves breaks, it's, all, it's just cosmetic. Um, so here we are again, uh, final lap of the race, going down the long DRS straight. Uh, we already know that you don't have the top speed to take the Red Bulls, unfortunately. It looks like Fat First has got the inside line for the corner. You're going to try and hang it around the outside, and with your slightly fresher prime uh, option tire, excuse me, um, you were able to hang it around, but then you just got a little touch of oversteer. Saved some curves, though. That's got you just alongside him. You break very late for this hairpin corner. There's ever so slightly a little bit of contact, and you're able to take that position, take P5 in the final lap of this race here and just behind Jack first and we've we've discussed uh, a couple times already how difficult it is to pass in sectors two and three but uh, you couldn't get any closer to him than you are right now yeah. so it was a little bit NASCAR bump drafting or something I gotta imagine your your mind right now in the race is is thinking how can I do this what do I need to do what's the corner I need to be lining up in order to get past him here and he's gone a little bit wide through that corner but you weren't close enough to sneak up the inside like you did previously very close behind now two tenths up on your previous lap three tenths behind Jack first and he's just pulling out ever so slightly with the the dirty air effect yeah, slowing corner. you down here we go through the final corner just going a little wide oh um, out of and fuel. you've run out of fuel as Gaston Rivero wins the race actually uh, congratulations to Gaston Rivero fantastic job uh, to edge out Kifla by seven tenths Alex Gillen by about three and a half seconds uh, another <laughs> it's, it's 23 seconds back to uh, you and fat first uh, do we know yet if Jack first's penalty was removed or not I think it was in one more, oh, yeah. Okay. So that put me on to sixth place. Yep, so that's P6 for Miko, P0 for me. Uh, wonderful Daft Punk helmet you've got on there. <laughs> or no, that's not you. Who, whose helmet is that, actually? Yeah, that, that's a mod that oh, I installed. Oh, it's, install, it's your mod. That's Gaston's. But yeah. Gaston's, gotcha, Gaston's driver. That's that's an interesting mod, though. I'm, I'm 
kind of disappointed that we didn't get Lotus at the beginning of the season now. <laughs> yeah. I would have loved to see you with that. So, yeah, what a fantastic race, actually, as we get a new winner for the first time this season. Uh, uh, Gaston Rivero is able to win the race um, as, again, ownage disconnected. Really unfortunate for him. Alex comes home in P3. And uh, Kiefler takes second place uh, to finish only his third race and take his second podium finish of the season. Moves himself up in, into eighth place. Um, I dropped down a couple of positions into tenth after Kiefler's second place finish. And Chicane gets a point after finishing in tenth. Um, and what that's going to do for the constructors is really not much. Oh, Mercedes has closed down Ferrari significantly, only three points behind with Romian, unfortunately, not taking part in this race. Red Bull with 163 points, followed by Sauber with 114, McLaren with 91, and it looks like Williams is actually starting to close down McLaren with 80 points, and Toro Rosso uh, even closer, only two points behind Williams. And yeah, that does it for this race. Yep, thanks so for watching, guys. Uh, next time, it's going to be the site of Mika Hakkinen's first Drivers' Championship win in 1998, and it's, of course, Suzuka in Japan. Thanks for watching.